I've started this experiment by first getting the dialysis tubing wet. This makes it much easier to actually pry it open so that we can place whatever liquid we need to inside of it. Initially what you'll want to do is twist your dialysis tubing on one end and then tie that end off with a piece of string. Make sure it's a good snug fit for the knot so that no liquid can actually seep out of this end at any point in time during the experiment. Once the string is securely fastened and you're sure that no liquid will leak out of the bottom of the bag, then it's time to actually add whatever liquid it is you're going to add to it. If this is the first part of the lab where you're adding either a sucrose or water solution, you'll simply pry the bag open on the opposite end, make a little bit of space so that the pipette's nose can actually dip into the bag, and then you'll take your pipette and fill it with, a, with whatever solution you want to add. In this particular instance, I'm using water. Fill up the pipette, and then you will place the nose of the pipette into the bag. Press the vacuum release button and slowly release the liquid into the bag. Be sure that you work the liquid into the bag so that the bottom part of the bag opens up. If not, the liquid's going to overflow and go out of the bag. So once you fill the bag up with the appropriate amount of liquid, you're then going to seal off the opposite end. So we will again twist the bag, and our goal here is to leave a small air bubble. So we'll twist the bag, and if there's not enough air, then we'll move a little farther up. Once we've established it, we will twist it so there's at least a tiny air bubble left in the top of the bag. Once this is done, you'll take the second piece of string. You will wrap the second end of the bag in that piece of string and secure it tightly so that no liquid can leak out of this end of the bag either. Once you've securely fastened the string onto the bag, you should now have something that looks somewhat like a candy wrapper. And we're going to use scissors and we're actually going to trim off the string, the excess string, and we're going to trim off the excess pieces of dialysis tubing. This is just to make the bag a little easier to work with. Once we've done this, we're ready to take our bag and obtain its initial mass. If this is the exercise described wherein we placed sucrose or water into the bag, we're going to need to first obtain its mass using the digital balance. So here I've teared out the digital balance with a large weigh boat on it, and I now place the bag and obtain the initial mass for that bag. At the very end of the exercise, you'll also obtain a final mass for the bag. After obtaining the mass of the bag, we're now free to place it in its respective beaker. Once placed into the beaker, the bag should be allowed to rest in the beaker for the appropriate amount of time as described in your lab manual. The purpose of experiment 6.2 was to determine the effect of solute concentration on osmosis. At the end of this experiment, you will once again obtain the mass of your bag using the digital balance, and depending upon the solution in which you placed your bag, you should either see an increase, a decrease, or no change in the mass of your bag. In experiment 6.3, you wanted to determine which molecules were able to permeate the bag and wind up in the beaker. At the end of this experiment, you will remove the bag from the beaker. There's no need to obtain its mass. Instead, you can simply throw it away. And then, 
Each group will come to each individual beaker and use a pipette pump to remove a certain amount of liquid from that beaker and place it into a test tube. Once each group has obtained liquid from all of the beakers, they can then test for each of the individual molecules or macromolecules to determine which were capable of permeating the bag.